Hi guys, welcome back to a, another GGF video. Today we'll be taking a quick look at the Antec High Current Pro 1300 watt, or as the shorter name is HCP 1300. So pretty much going by the name High Current Pro, you're gonna sort of get the idea that this is gonna be pretty damn good at um, delivering its 1300 watts. Now, just to give you a bit of an outline for this video, I'm not gonna do a full in-depth review. Uh, for starters, I don't have the knowledge, the skills, and the equipment in testing power supplies, but if you are looking at uh, getting down and dirty and finding out what's inside, how well this performs, uh, if you go ahead and check out the uh, uh, Johnny Guru uh, review on this, he does really good written reviews. I'll link that in the, uh, in the description. But, um, but just to say what this gets in his review, it gets a 9.9 .9 out of 10. I don't think I've seen a power supply get that high before. Uh, the ripple is excellent. Uh, the, uh, it's fully modular and the build quality is like no, uh, no other out there. So that's really nice to see. So I'm just pretty much gonna be going over uh, the unit itself and going over the cables, some of the cable links and things like that and how much you get. All right, so first of all, we'll just have a quick look at the unit now it's actually really sort of heavy um, just straight away now heavy normally does tend to mean that it's it's going to be good build quality and you can see there all of the uh, all of the outputs for your connectors and you got one interesting one over here called the OC link so Antec has uh, sent us one of these for a uh, upcoming uh, mod build we're doing uh, we should be receiving the brand new Antec S10 glass edition case uh, any day now and they've thrown this in for the build so the build will be a bit of a monster uh, so yeah we'll be uh, showcasing this in the uh, in the system we've got a really nice uh, Antec badge here it's kind of sort of like a copper sort of look there we've got the Antec logo here which also has a bit of a bit of a protection thing on which I can take off there we go and um, and there on the back we have uh, the sort of information, I just noticed that you can probably tell as a sticker, um, they might be great at making uh, good pass wise, but um, whoever put the sticker on um, definitely didn't put it on straight, but that's no, that's no real issue there. Um, just having a quick look at the rail system, the mains one we want to look at. So this is a, uh, it's got a multi rail system. So you got one, two, three, four, yeah, oh god, they make it really small. So 12 volt, one, two, three, four. Yeah, the four and like the numbering is just under the V. So you got four rails each at 50 amps each. So that's quite a bit there. And that brings it to a total of the 1300 watts. All right, so what we'll do is we'll have a quick look. Is there anything on the box? Um, if you're interested in the box, it comes with this really crazy reflective silver on there pretty much nearly blind you if you get that in the light um, just going over the dimensions of this it's 86 high which would be a standard height your width will be the standard 150 but it's uh 190 millimeters long so it's definitely not your longest but um it's longer than your sort of traditional uh square ones that you get for a much lower wattage i wonder if it's going to tell us the fan that's used um, 135 millimeter dbb silence fan with the quite high quality double or ball bearing fan for long lifetime that's pretty sweet and the other thing you probably want to know is it's uh, 94 percent um, efficient which is uh, well within the uh, platinum rating um, anything else we need to see on the back nothing really there it's going to pass all the standards standard you need um, it's got a seven year warranty and lifetime global 24 7 support that's pretty sweet um, all right that's enough it's got plenty of other languages there um, it says SLI support. I'm pretty sure we know that it's going to support SLI Crossfire. Um, another thing with this will cover the price. This isn't a cheap power supply. Uh, you can find this at ScoreTech for $4.99. But um, if you're after the best of the best, so you can't really get much better than this. Um, the only thing better is if you need a higher wattage, say like a 15 or a 1600 watt, um, in case of some crazy reason you need that. All right, um, so now we've got the uh, warranty thingamajig there we won't go in that <coughs> i do apologize for my voice i am just getting over a cold all right so we have english dutch spanish and french there and we've got all the different um i'm just going to go through the cables and we'll go through what you get on each one because uh it's always interesting to see what you get uh we got a power cable standard iec 
And this is actually the AU version. That's pretty sweet. Normally when I get power supplies, you don't know what you're gonna get. Now we have this oh, humongous bag here. It nearly weighs about the same as the power supply. Really, plenty of packaging inside. You're probably gonna get um, your unit nicely shipped to you in one piece. I haven't skimped out on that. All right, so let's have a look. A nice bag. Um, the bags are quite interesting. It's like, it's a bit of a Ziploc, not a Ziploc bag, sorry, Velcro there. And then there's Velcro as well going this way. So double Velcro. And I'm just gonna throw all these out here. Um, another area that uh, they've done well after, I also did check out the Johnny Guru review as well, just to get some background information on this power supply. They've used really nice thick uh, gauge wire. So it's not your traditional, I'm not sure what the standard is, but they definitely haven't skimped out. And what is interesting is they've gone with this crazy color. So much for uh, older power supplies, you've got like your yellow is your um, 12 volt, and then you've got your red and the black. This is like some crazy, uh, God, it's like, uh, it's like a rainbow effect. You've got pink, you've got light blues, you've got purples. Pretty much every cable is paired with a black swirl. So it's quite interesting that they've done that. Right, so what we'll do now is I'm just gonna uh, go through and open up um, most of these cables so we can check out the length and the braiding. Okay, so I've unraveled all those cables. Now I must admit that did take a bit of time because you do get a heap of cables. Before we jump into those, we'll just have a look at the other things you get. You get two nice little Antec Velcro sort of cable ties and you get four standard screws. I would think you would probably get a few more ties if you were to tie up all these cables. All right, now we'll go through the, the cables uh, one by one. First off, you'll notice is most of the cables have this huge sort of tag hanging off the end. To me personally, uh, I probably don't think they need to be so large. They could probably be a bit, bit smaller. I guess these are just for beginners and novice users. But then again, a novice user probably isn't gonna be purchasing a 1300 watt power supply. All right, so moving on to the uh, Moving on to the quality of the sort of the sleeve and sort of the wires used. Um, I've never really had power supply cables where they've been so stiff and strong before. Like I've had to sort of keep on twisting these to get these sort of to come out straight. So that means that they've used quite the thickness cable inside each um, each of the single runs. And the sleeve is quite sort of a quite sort of a hard and sort of abrasive. It's not the real soft sleeve. All right, now starting off with your 24 pin, uh, it measures uh, 600 millimeters, a nice long length there and plugging that in. Um, I actually tested this before and I had to stop the video that I've never seen a 24 pin. So you know you got your standard 24 pin on one end, plugs it into the motherboard. It's actually more than 24 pins that plugs into the uh, plugs into the power supply. It's actually 28 pins. So you get the first row of uh, the first lot of 20 goes into the power supply like so. And then you've got, looks like it's most of the 12s and the grounds all plug into uh, down below into one of the dedicated 12 volt one, two, three, and you can't get it to reach any further. So you can get it to plug into the 12 volt one or 12 volt two rails like that. Because if you actually look at the end, you can see that uh, quite a few of the, uh, looks like must be the plus 12s are duplicated in the single same holes. So it's quite interesting they've gone with that, gone with uh, more than what is actually uh, the standard for 24. Now moving on to your, uh, to your EPS power for the top of your motherboard. Now these are quite long, I do like that, and these are about 700 millimeters. And these are your standard, uh, one of these uh, is your, your solid eight, and one of these is your dual fours, but I'm pretty sure not much has four these days. I guess that's more of a board that has an eight and a four. Um, I'm pretty sure that some of the Aces Maximus formula, formula boards were doing that. And then these ones just plug into your standard area on the power supply. Now, one area that's really interesting I want to look at, <coughs> pardon me, for this uh, power supply are these two leads here. So some of the VGA leads come with your traditional uh, traditional uh, power supply end and it splits off into a uh, two sixes or two eights using the two, uh, the two little uh, sort of add-on bits. So you get one, two, three of those, which will take up three ports on the power supply, but can run up to three uh, dual sort of eight pin or six pin powered cards. So therefore sort of your less powerful, less powerful hungry cards. And these ones are about 600 there and you get about an extra 10 centimeters on that end. But now they've included these two whoppingly huge cables. If you're running say like a hardcore uh, 
I don't know, like a 600 watt card and you really need, need the extra wattage. So these measure at about 600. Now this is a 16 pin connector on this end and this will give you a maximum of two eights. So this is pretty much just a one to one uh, ratio. So they haven't done any splitting like the previous cables where they've started off with a uh, an eight pin coming out of the power supply and they've uh, ended up with uh, 16 connectors on there. So you're not gonna um, be getting any voltage drop or, or anything on these ones. So if you're running some monster cards, uh, definitely use these nice big chunky cables. So it's pretty sweet they've done that. They put some thought behind it. And then these ones can plug into, I'll just unplug this 24 pin out of the way. And then these ones can just go into any of the, uh, any of, of the dedicated ones along the bottom or along the top. So that's pretty sweet. There's lots of flexibility on where you can plug the cables in. All right, so moving on to peripherals. So I'm just seeing if we've got any Molex SATA that are split. It's quite interesting to see power supplies that do that, but I'm not sure if they do do that these days. Um, all right, here we go. All right, so here's your SATA. I think it says somewhere you get, uh, where's your SATA all up? I think it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine SATA, I'd probably say that's pretty much standard these days. And this is over, oh, that's about, I'll say that's about 900 millimeters all up. And then you've got the increments with the SATA are about, uh, about 15, uh, 15 millimeters apart are the increments. So you get three of those. So they're nice and long. Now moving on to your Molex. You don't get quite as many Molex. Uh, one of the Molex leads is your floppy ad uh, adapter. That's all always handy for things like sound cards and things like that. And this one's extremely long. So that's uh, probably close to a meter there. And then you've got this one here, which is about, uh, that's about 800 there. And then you get a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Molex on there and then we get this nifty little connector here which I mentioned before it's got the OC link so this just plugs into the unit uh, like so and this allows you to connect another unit of this same series so another H, uh, HCP Platinum and that'll allow you to run two units at the same time so <coughs> say you have 2000 watt units you can get up to 2000 watts and it says in the documentation that you can use any connectors across the two power supplies that are linked. So you can use the VGAs on one, uh, the Molex on one, the motherboard on one, and so on. So that's a pretty sweet a little feature there. Probably not going to be using that for most people, but if you're doing a mining rig or some crazy, uh, crazy liquid nitrogen and you need some steady power, that's probably definitely the way to go. Another thing I noticed that's quite cool that I do like is the logos are flipped. So you've got the Antec on this side, but then when you're on this side, the Antec is upside down. So that's if you've got a system where you want to face it like this, but if you want to face it like this, the the logo will be the right way. Uh, many times I've had it, you get the logo this way, you want to uh, mount it like this for some reason, and the logo is upside down. So that's pretty sweet that they've done that. But um, yeah, apart from that, I just want to keep it pretty short. Don't want to go on too long. Um, I'll, I'll be doing quite a few videos with this build I'm doing, so you'll definitely see this uh, see this uh, power supply being used quite a bit in there but um but yeah that's it for this video so far i'm really impressed and definitely from the reviews i've seen this is a monster power supply i just want to thank antec for sending this sending this unit out and thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time